hungry. We have to do this video because we got a lot of favorites and a few things I couldn't really care for. Um, so uh, let's just get started. Let's start off with a really random one, a fragrance. Now when I saw this in the PX um, where I bought it, uh, I was like, another one? I feel like Ariana Grande has come out with so many perfumes like in such a short amount of time. Y'all know I fucking love Ariana Grande whenever people are like, who's your favorite K-pop artist? I'm like, Ariana Grande, even though she's obviously not an idol or anything. I missed out on the first, what was it, the first whatever perfume that she came out with. And I know she came out with one called Frankie or something, uh, in homage to her brother, I suppose. I picked this up, I smelled it, obsessed. Now, I can't even... I can't really describe the smell because I'm like, huh, it just smells good. It smells kind of like my uh, other favorite perfume, the Britney um, Dark Fantasy. Love those kinds of smells. I'm not much of a cologne person. I feel like it just irritates my nose. So I like really sweet uh, smelling shit like Victoria's Secret body sprays, Bath and Body Works body sprays. But in general, anything with like blueberry smells, that's what it is. I think it's called Sweet Like Candy. But I put it in like a little atomizer. So I can take it out with me because obviously this fucking big ass ball is heavy as fuck. You can murder someone with this. Party in the front, business in the back. Well, I talked too much about one perfume, okay? I need to keep moving on. But yeah, I really like this one. It might be a little bit too sweet for some people, but I like that kind of smell, so... Let's talk about makeup. Now, I spent like the past 20, 30 minutes looking for this palette. I can't find it for the life of me. But um, it's the palette that I use in my fall, what is it, my fall daily makeup. The, the makeup that's also on my Instagram. And um, those four shades from Etude House, like, well, I'm not wearing it, I'm wearing something else. But I am obsessed with those colors. I still want, I'm, as a person that does like what I'm doing on YouTube, I feel like I'm obligated. I feel obligated to like, try so many different things but those four combinations which i actually put together randomly one day and like i was obsessed ever since um i feel like i always have to try other things but like i've been wanting to just use those all the time but yeah those are like my go-to shades for like this season um <coughs> I'm so, oh, i was stupid when i bought the little things and put them in the palette i didn't save the name so uh those will the names will be saved down below so you can check those out another item that was featured in that video is kat von d liquid lipstick in double dare really love this is honestly just like my lip color but like i don't know better i guess and then when i like put some concealer around to like really make almost in a gradation make it look more natural on my lips really really pretty um i always get asked about what i'm wearing on my lips whenever i wear this color i bought it when i was at Sephora in california so um and it's like 20 dollars. it's not too bad for a liquid like this especially compared to a lot of other makeup that i buy this is pretty decent in price of course 20 dollars can be a lot of money to some people so I don't know. I really like the shade. And it's actually almost exactly the same as that One Pony Effect liquid lipstick. Uh, I, th I don't remember. It'll be here somewhere. But the two shades are almost exactly the same. I like the formula of this one, though, because it doesn't make my lips, like, when it dries and then you do this, it doesn't, like, show cracks in your lips. It lays, like, a film down on your lips. The Pony Effect one, I noticed, like, you let it dry and then if your lips stretch out, all the cracks will show up. And so you have to put, like, a second layer on top to make sure all the little cracks are filled. Doesn't really happen with this. Super pigmented, almost too pigmented, I think. A little bit goes like such a long way, and the formula is super light and airy. So Pony added new powders into her collection, and these aren't just powders; they're actually powder foundations. Um, it's the Cover Fit Powder Foundation, and just like the other one, they're you know a, a powder you can use to set your foundation, or you can wear it alone because it is a foundation. Um, it has a, quite a bit of coverage if you use the included velour puff with it. And, uh, well, not quite a bit of coverage. It's like, like, if you wear it alone, it'll probably be, like, a light coverage. But I like to put it over my liquid or whatever foundation. And it really gets rid of any extra redness that the other foundation uh, didn't take care of. It's not like an HD powder where it's meant to, like, cover your pores and your lines. But it covers your pores and your lines. It really makes your skin look so much smoother. I got one in a shade that's my skin tone and one in a lighter shade um, to do some highlight. And I really like putting it under my eyes. That's actually what I did today. Um, does it look okay? Is it alright? Oh my god, the little the writing on the thing scratched off. Uh, this Super Shock Cheek Highlighter in Lunch Money, I show him like every fucking video. Y'all know I'm obsessed with this. The subscriber that got it, the, the subscriber that got this for me, bless your heart. The texture is like a really smooth, oh my god, actually it looks just like a white thing there, but... Oh my god, you probably can't even see it on camera very well, but oh my god, this highlighter, especially when I do my nose contour, bitch, it will make my nose look like Pinocchio, bitch. And when I put it on top of my cheekbones, oh my god, wet 
cheeks for the gods. I can't even like describe it. It's such a fantastic highlighter, super pigmented and creamy, and it sits really well on top of the skin. Uh, I would just use it with a, your fingers, not a brush. And I find that it works well even over powdered skin, so I don't need to talk about it anymore. I've been using this Etude House Long Lash Mascara in like everyday basis and also in a lot of my videos. Um, it's just like, for me personally, it's like the perfect uh, formula. Well, the brush, first of all. Um, you can't really see it, but there's like really tiny, tiny rubber bristles here. And um, I find that it combs through the lashes really well. It doesn't make them look any thicker, I think. It just kind of adds, for me, it just adds like a tint of black to them. My lashes are uh, uh, pretty, blah, blah, blah. my lashes are pretty decent in general, I think. So I don't, I just uh, add this to make them look a little bit more black. Um, and also, I, I think it helps um, do, uh, the thing I always talk about doing, this thing to my eyes. And this stuff lasts all day, it does not smudge on me. I don't curl my lashes so I can't speak on like the curling power, but um, it's a waterproof foam, it's a waterproof, oh, I need to calm down. I like, cannot, I'm like too excited. It's a waterproof formula, I feel like it would hold a curl well, because the, the formula is not too heavy at all. Um, it's quite light and keeps your lashes, like, it doesn't leave them crusty. But if you're gonna layer it, layer it while it's still kind of wet. Um, if you try to layer it after it's completely dry, then it's like... <coughs> but yeah, I, I really like this mascara. This I picked up because of Shannon XO? Shannon? Yeah, Shannon XO. Uh, she's always, she used it quite often in her videos, and, um, uh, when I was in America, I saw it, so I wanted to pick it up. I love this for setting my under eyes, especially if I want to, like, go for, like, um, like, no powder at all, just my base. But I definitely have to set my under eyes because, you know, I have quite a bit of lines under my eyes. This really sets my under eyes but keeps it looking natural, not dry. And because it's an HD powder, it really like smooths everything out under there. And I noticed when I use this all day, my under eyes are perfect. So, and it's dirt, it's really inexpensive. So I really recommend this. And um, I, whenever I use it, I use it with a kind of, um, I think this is meant to be a large um, eyeshadow brush, but I think this is the perfect shape for just putting it under the eyes and kind of sweeping off the excess. I'll put a lot in the brush really pack it on, almost like baking, and then I'll just sweep off the excess, and I find that it really, really helps. This foundation from Cleo, I kind of randomly um, picked up because I just walked into, uh, I was waiting for a young group because we were going to meet, and he was still on his way. So I went into Cleo, just, you know, whatever, and he was like, oh, look, we have a new foundation. So I picked it up, and to my surprise, it's a really fantastic foundation. I have a review on it. I'll link it. I'll try to remember to link it up here. I almost never do it. But it'll be here or in the description box. The coverage on this shit is amazing. It comes with its own sponge. Not like the Beauty Blender, it's very hard, but it's okay because it doesn't eat up any extra product or anything. It just gets the right amount of product on your skin, so... And, and the sponge comes with its own case, which is super convenient, so you can take it around with you. I would just make sure to wash it. Um, well, I wash it before every use, but, um... The Concealation Foundation from Kill Cover is one of my top favorites right now whenever I do someone's makeup. Um, I'll use this on them because it gives, like, a real... Even though it's, like, a really high coverage foundation, you would first assume that maybe it's gonna be like dry, cakey, like really makeup-y looking, but it's really skin-like, it's really smooth. It's not super matte, but it's not super glowy. Um, I think the day that I tested it out, um, I left it alone, because I wanted to see how it worked alone, and throughout the day it left more of like a, a soft sheen, a soft glow on the skin, uh, so nothing like greasy, but it's, a lo it's also very long-wearing. I'm really, really happy about this. Clio really kills it with their bases for the most part. For the most part so and their concealers in general are like my favorite ever so um when they're making a concealer foundation I had to hop on that and i do not regret it this one not a surprise to you i'm sure cover effects custom cover drops i use this originally it's meant to add coverage to your foundation but this one i got in like a really deep shade so um if i'm doing because a lot of korean foundations are really light as we already know so if i'm doing someone's makeup or my even my own especially more during the summer when my i had more of a tan i would mix this into my foundation it would uh get me give me the right color i got this in g80 it has golden undertone but i because i use so little like the tone doesn't really matter um <clears throat> it just adjusts the shade enough for me and i find that it fits pretty well. But if you're interested in trying like Korean foundations, maybe something like this, but you're worried about um, like it being too light, which is definitely like a real issue, then this is definitely a must have. Um, it really opens up so many more options for you, especially if you're interested in Korean like base makeup. Picking up something like this and adding it to your foundations, deep in it really works. And because you use such little product, it's like pure pigment bitch. Because you use such little product, it doesn't affect the formula. So if you want something that's like really dewy, then it will still retain its dewiness. It'll just adjust the shade. If you want something more matte, it won't make it any drier or anything. So it's all it's doing is just adjusting the shade for you. And I need a fucking drink because my mouth is... <laughs> 
The Laneige Eyebrow Cushion Cara, I've been also using in many a video as of late. Um, I have a review on this as well, will be up here or down below. I've been using this like every day. It gives me like the right amount of pigment that I want. It has two shades in there. I use one shade to line my, uh, I I'm not using it today. Actually, am I using it today? No, I'm not. I'm using something else, I'm using eyeshadow. But this one, uh, for me, it gives me really natural looking brows, but like they're very defined, especially because I'm using like, uh, oh shit, <sighs> this little angle brush on there. The colors are too harsh. They're more liquidy. And uh, because there's two shades in there, you can get more of like a natural gradient to your brows or whatever. And actually one thing that I uh, left out of the review that I didn't know until later uh, someone commented, uh, you can actually dip this into the, oh, can you even see that? You can dip it into the formula actually. Oh shit. And you can actually comb through your brows and use it as eyebrow mascara. I've done this before and doesn't really make much of a difference, but that's something interesting to know. A little pricey, but I definitely, I think it's worth it. And I still have a ton of product in there. I'm using it every day for like, since I got it. The Sephora Color Switch by Vera Mona is like a must have for me, especially since I like to use this one brush from Pony Effect. It's number two, oh my God, I can't even see it. 202, I think. Um, I use it for my eyeshadow, I use it for my nose contour, I use it for a lot of things, I use it for powder as well. Making sure that there's no pigment left on the brush is really important because you don't want to be mixing colors all over your face. So all I do is swipe it in there a few times, it will take off all of the pigment. I do wash this every now and then with just regular soap and water, but it really has saved me from using like a bunch of different brushes um, to do just a few different jobs. So I think it's, it's about $18, a little pricey, but I think it's definitely worth it, especially if you only can afford like one brush. Buying this one, I guess is better than trying to buy a bunch of different brushes and then having to wash them every time or whatever. But yeah, I always have this on me. Vanity Planet sent me a brush set, which I'm sure you guys uh, are probably familiar with because several YouTubers have talked about it. Um, it's like that vegan brush set in that little roll thing. And I never really used this brush until like this month where I started using a lot more powder. And then I remember that tip from Go Wayne Goss about you know, buffing your powder and it will make your skin look much more airbrushed in person, especially. So I've been like loving this one for that because it's such a good, um, like the shape of it, it's really, it's not too like angular at one point. It's all very round. So you can really buff in the skin without feeling like you're like uh, 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 at some points, you know what I mean? So after I powder all my skin or whatever, I can really buff my skin in using this brush in particular and it will help give that sort of HD look in person. You know, like on Facetune, you can smooth out your skin. It gives, you, it gives you that look in person and it prevents the look of like really like cakey looking makeup because it buffs off all of the extra powder that's just sitting on top and it just keeps whatever should be there, there. I believe the code for, uh, to get the whole set for $30 is still available. So I'll, I'll put that down below for you if you're interested. It's vegan, cruelty-free, and um, they're all pretty decent brushes. Now, the what I noticed is that the glue on some of the brushes is getting loose. One of them even popped off, so I wouldn't say it's like the most high quality um, brush set ever, but it has a lot of basic brushes that um, would anyone would find useful, honestly. Um, and if you don't have any brushes and you need something to start out with, that's a really fantastic uh, brush set because it has so many brushes that you would find useful. It even has like a fan brush in there. This is the Makeup Forever one, but uh, that's not something that you often see. Um, actually, another Vanity Planet thing is this spin brush, and I still am using this every day. I Especially, uh, well, I use it at the end of the day. Um, after my first cleanse, I'll use it on my second cleanse. And I notice how much more makeup is being removed from my skin because after I'm done using it, there's like a bit of like a beige tone to the bristles. Um, but I've noticed definitely that my skin feels so much cleaner, so much smoother every day because it's almost like a tiny bit of an exfoliation every day and it hasn't broken me out or anything. So that's an A+. Uh, this one also has a discount code, so you can get this for $30 as well. I do have a review, a complete review on this and all the other brush heads. I'll link that up here and down below if you are interested to check that out. And then last for favorites, I'm going to talk about skincare. Now, I can't pinpoint one thing because a lot of people have been telling me, oh, Edward, your skin is uh, so much nicer now. And like, thank you. I don't think it's just the spin brush, but I think it's like, I've got a bunch of skincare from Style Korean lately. And like this combination that I'm using right now has really evened out this bitch's skin tone. Because as you guys already know, I have very red skin. So I'm just going to talk about them as like a whole. I run through each little product. Um, because I can't really pinpoint which one is like helping me the most. To start out with cleansing, uh, the Perfect Facial Deep Cleansing Oil from Natural Pacific. This like really hits all the marks. That, did you see how I, I've only had it for like three weeks or so, but like I'm already almost done because I love it so much. It's a cleansing oil, but it's really thin, but it really melts the makeup really quickly. 
And my favorite part is how quickly it rinses off. It's not like the Claire's one where like you feel like there's still a residue. You can totally just, even with water, I feel like you can just rinse it off. I still use a sponge uh, to wipe off all my, um, you know, the residue, like a sponge that I ran under hot water to wipe that all off. But it, and it doesn't sting my eyes, which is uh, an issue I have with some other cleansers. But this one is like really good. Like I was surprised at how good this cleansing oil is. And you'll notice that a lot of these things are actually natural from the same brand, Natural Pacific, which I recently discovered. Um, and they're all pretty decently priced. They're not too bad, especially lately with all these like Halloween looks I've been doing and Halloween these Halloween events I've been going to lately. It quickly removes like everything, every especially gel liner or whatever. A plus for this toner. This one is from Benton. It's the Aloe Beach Skin Toner. Do you see how much I use? I use. I feel like I always whenever I use them, I'm like. Shh, shh, shh. What really got me for this is that. It has like all of the things I would ever want in a toner. This bitch has what she had, what she had. Aloe, of course. There's BHA in there, which you, as you all already know, acid exfoliants, uh, top of the list. You need that in your skincare routine. And then also snail secretion filtrate, which is also a skincare ingredient that I love in my skincare. So this one, fantastic. Doesn't burn my skin or anything. It feels really soft on the skin. It's really moisturizing as well, but it gets the job done in terms of a toner, the last step of your cleansing, exfoliates the skin, heals it, all that. Next up is eye cream, which I don't talk about too often, but this is what I've been using lately. It's the Fresh Herb Hyaluron Eye Cream from Natural Pacific, another Natural Pacific product. Uh, it says it has peptides in it, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, um, which is, you know, ingredients that I would like in my eye cream. I don't know, I feel like I'm less liney, I suppose. I don't notice like a gigantic difference, but um, it's pretty good for an eye cream. I only need like the tiniest bit because such a little goes such a long way. So I think budget-wise would be a good option for you. It's not too, too creamy, but it's quite like, it's almost thin in a way, but it's like quite, I don't wanna use the word moisturizing because that's so like cliche. It's very moisturizing. It's very meaty. Someone was laughing because I used the word media to describe foundation once. The next two items though, I've been like, I think these might be the reason why my skin has been looking really great lately. Um, one, they're both Natural Pacific again. Um, one is the Phyto Niacin Whitening Essence. It's a, oh my god, you see I'm like almost out. Whenever I use this, I use a whole dropper. A whole dropper, bitch. Mm -hmm. It provides moisture, shining, whatever that means. Brightening, no blemish, and balance. It also says whitening, but I think whenever Korean products say whitening, you should just take it as meaning brightening, like evening out the skin tone, not like literal white, because people get like the wrong idea, and like, oh my skin bleaching! That's not what it is. That's not what it means. So the neocyanamide in here improves dark spots and evens out the skin tone, which is exactly what it's been doing. Hyaluronic acid, which is great for moisture. Y'all need hyaluronic acid in your lives. And since I've been using this, obsessed i can't oh god I, I, I really think i'm gonna buy another bottle i think i'm really gonna get another bottle after that i'll go in with the last red solution um relaxing redness and sensitive skin flush cream this one also has neocyanamide which um i really love this is obviously as you can tell it's an ingredient that i enjoy in my skincare got chamomile for skin redness viscum album leaf i don't know what the fuck that is but it's supposed to relax sensitive skin i guess you could say i have sensitive skin uh, i think any skin that's acne prone is technically sensitive skin using these in common in tandem with each other um especially around here which is my problem area less red um i use i notice i use less makeup uh, because my skin tone in general is easier to... I just noticed that it's easier to cover things quickly with less makeup these days because my skin tone is much better. But those together, chuego, chuego. Next is sun cream, the Xylitol Mild Sun Gel from NLab. I think of this as like a less thin version of my all-time favorite, Too Cool For School Sun Essence. Um, I really love this because it does not disturb um, foundation that sits on top because it feels like such a, it just feels like a light moisturizer. So I'll go in with my entire skincare routine, all that, and then I'll put this on top and it just feels like, uh, sun cream. It doesn't like make your skin feel tight or dry or by the end of the day you see like the, the sunblock or sun cream like sitting on top of your skin or if you're wearing makeup and you don't notice it interrupting or anything. So with this I get my full protection but none of the issues with regular disgusting sunblock. Before I go into my like shits of October, um, I want to talk a little bit about some like fashion accessories. As you guys have seen from some of my uh, Instagram photos, I've been obsessed with these rings lately. I've been obsessed with like the many ring look and also earrings. I can't link you to any of these because I got them from like this side road thing in um, near my house. So 
I mean, that, that's where they sell them. But they have, like, a boy section. And um, they have a bunch of these, like, badass-looking rings. My favorite, though, is probably the giraffe. Look, how fucking, look at that. It's a giraffe. I got... Represent! <laughs> it's just annoying because when I try to put my hand in my pocket, the head, like, gets stuck. And it's just a little absurd. But, you know, for fashion... Whenever I have a bad hair day, my solution is just to wear a hat. A moja. And this one is from my friend's brand, AB Road. I think they recently started shipping internationally, so I think I can link this for you. Hopefully it's still up. I think it's from their winter collection. But my favorite part, other than the fact that it's like pleather, faux leather, it's like a really interesting um, material. And I think it's very classic, like the shape in general and like the material. You, I can see myself wearing this for the next many a year because I go through uh, hats very, very quickly. Like I get tired of them really quick. But my favorite detail is like this back ring. And the rings have been like really in lately. And I can tell that's probably not gonna last forever. But I don't know, this simple ring in the back just makes it unique but very classic. I feel, I don't know, I like it. It says sold out on the back. <laughs> that's me. All right, y'all. Now it's time for the shits of October. I actually don't have many. Um, I only have one, uh, actually it's like four products, but it's from the same uh, line, I guess. And I actually made an entire video about these, but I don't think it's worth even posting. I, probably, I deleted the footage, in fact. But basically, to sum up my feelings on the Nose Up highlighter and shading things from Petty Petta, I don't know. She didn't even talk about these, and there were, she was like raving about them. They're basically um, like little cushion things, almost like the Etude House Cushion Concealer. But use these to like shade the sides of your nose, make your nose look taller. There's also there's two contour shades and there's two highlight shades. One's more pink, one's more gold. It says gold, but like it's more of just like a beige um, tone highlighter. But my big issue with these is that well, one, let's talk. There's two issues. I like, main issues for me, the contouring shades. Originally, number two was sold out, so I just picked up uh, the first one. And the first thing I noticed when I put it on was like. Is this just concealer or something? Because it was ex my exact skin tone. I'm, a Ma I'm like a MAC NC25. Um, and it was like, I don't see anything. Even in the light, there was like no difference. It literally looked like concealer. When I swatched it on my house, I was like, oh shit, this is like the perfect shade for like contour because it's a very neutral beige tone, almost has a, has a bit of gray to it. Uh, so it looks like a real shadow. Like it looks like a real shadow, like this. The color, this right here, it looks like that, but it was not deep enough for me. So I bought, um, what was it? I think I bought these two in store, and then I ordered these two um, online so I can review all of them for you. But honestly, even the second shade, it makes such li little difference. It's a little better, it's a little better, but like for me personally, I like to, my nose contour look a little more obvious. And I know people like, they like natural contour, but like this is to the point where it's like, is it even worth putting on? So I'm thinking that the color work will probably work very well on like really fair skins. This will probably definitely show up on your skin tone. Uh, like I said, the color is there, it's perfect. But the color for me is like, if you're anything like MAC NC25 and up, this will not show up on you at all. You're probably, probably, you could probably use it as a highlighter, in fact, if your skin tone is deep enough. The highlighters, they're kind of whatever, they don't really show up, I feel like they're kind of, like you put it on, you're like, oh wow, this is going to be a really pretty highlight, but like, it just blends out, there's like not even any like, reflectiveness to it. I would almost go, it's like so thin in formula that it doesn't even really show up on the skin, not even the slightest bit of sheen. My second issue with these is that the tip, <laughs> the tips, <laughs> the plastic part where the product comes out, we'll say, is this, and then the actual cushion ends like, right not too far up so like the space between the two is so thin when you put it on your nose it's too the cushion is just basically the cushion is too hard so you're almost like wiping off your foundation that you put on your nose which completely like what's the point if like you're contouring and then suddenly you see your if you have like a really red nose like me like if you start shading and then you've got like the color of this if it shows up and then you've got like the redness of your natural skin tone that will look really fucking weird so you probably can't even use this if you have to put foundation on your nose because it'll just wipe it off overall these were like a complete fail for me i don't know if your skin tone is light enough the formula itself if you can get it on there properly is actually pretty good it creates like a film on the skin so um if you like if i had put it here when I move, it like moves the skin and doesn't crack or anything. So it's almost like a liquid lipstick in a way. Um, it's supposed to help cover pores on the nose. So a lot of people have porridge action on the nose. So that might help you. But honestly, overall, not worth 
I feel like not worth anybody's time to be honest. <laughs> now for the last part where I talk about products that were just like, eh, okay, they're all right. Both of these products I've already reviewed, so you can go check those out. The first one I'll talk about is the Coverstay Cushion Foundation from Pony Effect. <laughs> as much as I love Pony, this product was like, all right. It was okay. It's one of those products where it will work only in certain conditions. Like with a lot of sunscreens, this will not work because as I've already talked about before, sunscreens can disrupt foundation and this foundation is one of those that will definitely make that apparent. Even if you don't use sunscreen, you just put this on top of your skincare or whatever. It doesn't really control oil. It's supposed to control oil and leave you with a matte finish all day, but it doesn't really do that. It kind of breaks down um, after like four or five hours, which is, I don't know, for me, I have long days, so that does not cut it for me. And if I really wanted a dewy finish, I would just use the original formula, which I find much better. And even if it's a dewy formula, it doesn't break down. The coverage is really good. Actually, I'm wearing it today. Lately, I've been a little bit more into only because it's a little bit colder these days. So I feel like the cold weather is making it work slightly better. But I don't want to go through like all the rains just to like make this work. I'd rather just use the original. Honestly, I've only been using it lately because it's ex really fucking expensive and I need to use it up. I just don't think for what you're paying, it's completely worth it. And if I really want this to look fantastic and beautiful all day, I have to go through like all the steps, like primer, powder, all that. So, so if you're not that kind of bitch that wears a ton of makeup like that, don't even bother with this. But if you don't mind, it's a good foundation. Last but not least for this video is the Etude House Eddie Cushion. This one also has a review, like I said. Um, and I just feel like it's, I don't know, I got, when I made the review, uh, there were a few people that were saying that they actually really like it, it's like their new holy grail or whatever. Um, I feel like this will work if you have like a really beautiful skin and it's slightly dry or normal. Cause when you put it on, see, it's one of those new like filter type foundation. <coughs> one of those new filter type foundations that has like a screen over the cream. So it like controls how much product is going with the sponge. And I don't know, obviously compared to like a regular cushion foundation, when I dip in, like you get a ton of product and you go, oh shit, I'm gonna get coverage, bitch. But no, it all like disappears into little, I don't know where the fuck it goes. Like, where does it go? In the review today, I talk about many times about how it's like a tinted moisturizer. It really just feels, I wouldn't even go so far as to say for me, but being a person with like problematic skin that has quite a bit to cover up, I feel like I would rather just use like a, a real tinted moisturizer because even this, the coverage is so low and I have to keep building up that I don't even bother. And like, I know, I understand it's supposed to give you like a glow, but for on me, it looks almost greasy, I would say. And especially like when I'm patting it on my skin, you could like hear like the stickiness where it's like, it's kind of gross to be honest with you. So like I said, unless you have very good skin that's like normal to drive in, I probably would not even bother touching this. Some lovely subscriber was nice enough to get me the Misha one, so we're gonna try that out at some point, hopefully this week. But yeah, both of these foundations, it's just those foundations that like only fit people with certain needs, which is all right, I guess, but for me, I don't know. That's why they're under this uh category. So, uh, that's a lot of fucking talking. As per usual, if you're interested in any of the products, um, I will link them down below for you to check them out, um, as well as all the review videos on things that I have reviewed. And yeah, follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, Beauty Beast, and Africa. <laughs> Baby, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.